Welcome to Eastern California and Western Nevada, where gold was first discovered in the United States. We're going to take a little trip from a little west of Reno here, clear on down through Yosemite and Death Valley, and back up and ending in Virginia City. Now on our first day's journey, we're going to go about 50 miles west of Reno to a little town called Sierra City, and then to Downeyville, Comptonville, and on down to Nevada City, and Auburn, then Pilot Hill, and then Colma, and then Diamond Springs, El Dorado, a town called Pokerville that's now Plymouth, and Dry Town and Amador City. Sierra City is the first of the mining towns along Highway 49. It's one of the largest gold producing towns in the whole Sierra range. The second largest nugget ever found in California came out of this area. But after the first year of mining, the town was wiped out by an avalanche. It sat empty for a couple of years and then the lure for gold was too much so the people came back and that luckily there hasn't been any more avalanches since that time. We were surprised to see that people have moved back into most of the California ghost towns except for Bowie which is on the third day's journey from here. I noticed that the age on a lot of these tombstones are only around 40 or 50 years old so it must have been a fairly hard life living around a mining camp. Also, if you found one of those big nuggets and you didn't get it broke up or got it out of there quietly, well, the chances are you wouldn't live too long either because there's a lot of highwaymen in the area. Just a few miles north of the town, you come to the Kentucky Mine. They offer guided tours during the tourist season, but since this is October, you just have to kind of look around by yourselves. In the early days, the ore cars for the mine dumped the ore in the top of this building where it ran through the crusher. Then the water washed it on down a 45 degree slope until it reached the bottom. Boards are nailed across the slopes every few feet to cause riffles in the water. The lighter sand and rocks wash on over the boards and the gold, which weighs seven times as much as anything else, stays in the dips. To make it easier, mercury is placed in the riffles which sticks and adheres to the gold then it's separated from the gold by a heating process later on this is only just one of the ways of mining gold it's the most precious mineral on earth but it's found in minute quantities in almost all rocks everywhere even seawater has a small amount of gold in it but it's such a small quantity that it isn't profitable to extract it. Most of the world's gold comes from South Africa and Russia, but the Western United States have yielded up enough gold to make many people rich. And yet there's something far more valuable than gold, but we'll talk about that later. This whole string of towns for 200 miles on California's backcountry of mountain ranges on Highway 49 was one of the richest deposits in our continent. This is beautiful country up here. Next we head south toward Downeyville. Now Downeyville was named after William Downey, who was a Scotsman, and he first panned gold in the river. Since he was getting $200 worth a day, the population soon grew to 5,000. The largest nugget found in California was found here. In fact, all the largest nuggets came from this area. 
This particular one weighed 427 pounds, and even though it had a lot of quartz in it, it still was worth over $90,000. It was the second largest nugget ever found anywhere in the world. One time a very poor middle-aged lady came here to start a boarding house. It was made out of boards and a tent roof with a dirt floor. She took in boarders for $12 a week. One day when raking and sweeping the floor, she found a piece of gold. She ran and got her brother and started panning the floor. Before the day was over, they got $500. When the boarders arrived back, they were told that they had to go eat elsewhere. A month later, she returned back east with much more than she could have ever made at a boarding house. At least 50 miners made fortunes at one area of Slate Creek. After everybody else left this area and there was no more gold to be found, the Chinaman came in and got what little was left, as was the case in most of the California gold camps. Since quite a bit of gold ore was found in rocks, these stamp mills were required to crush the rocks and to extract the gold out of them before it could go through the processing. One day, three men in the Downeyville area found a gold nugget that weighed 227 pounds. They didn't know what to do about it because if they reported it around town, well, they likely wouldn't live too long. So one of them went to the hardware store and bought a big chisel and he chiseled it into smaller pieces, wrapped it up in a blanket, each one of them, and they carried it to New York where they sold it for $50,000. A Mexican woman named Juanita was hanged by a beam on the bridge for the stabbing death of one of her boyfriends. Mexicans were barely tolerated, so the same day she did it, she was found guilty and hanged. She was the only woman that was ever hung in California. Comptonville is the next town after you leave Downeyville. Nevada City actually got its name in 1849 10 years before the state of Nevada was formed. It was named after the snowy mountains in the background. Nevada means snowy. When an early miner came and found gold here, it wasn't very long until there were soon 10,000 miners in the area. A few of the miners rubbed their eyes in disbelief when they saw a woman standing knee deep in the cold water, working a rocker right along with the men. The woman's name was Madam Penn, and soon she got together enough money to start a boarding house, the first in Nevada City. The Union Hotel now stands on the same site. After a while, when all the placer gold, or pleasure gold, the loose stuff that could be scooped up from the creek bottoms is gone, the people started looking around and they even started digging up the streets of the city and they actually found gold there. One merchant, because he was angry at the shambles in front of his store, got after the man with the shovel and he said, you can't dig in a public street like this. And the miner said he could because there's no law that said he couldn't. Then the storekeeper drew his gun and said, I'll make one, you get. And the miner moved his operations to the next street. Shortly after that, on a hill called Lost Hill, just a little ways from town, a fantastically rich plastering area was discovered. Several miners took out a quart of gold in a single day worth $6,000. There was too much dirt in the area, so tunnels were necessary to get all the gold underneath. The area became a maze of burrows, and the resulting town was named Coyoteville. But in a short time, it was just swallowed up by Nevada City as it kept growing. During that mad two-year rush, a total of $8 million was removed from the area.
In 1859, the last discovery was made when a man was crossing a creek and he fell in and pulled a rock out when he was getting out and he saw yellow behind it. So he went home not to attract any attention and brought a shovel and sack back and cleaned out $2,000 worth. The old town of Auburn sits down the hill from the new town. Gold was first found here by some Easterners on their way to Downeyville when the road was flooded out. And they took some shovels and started digging and found three pounds of gold worth $980. Shortly after that, more gold was found a ways away from the river called dry diggings. And the people had to carry it over to the river to wash it out. During 1848, a hard-working miner could make from $800 to $1,500 a day, which was really a lot of money back then. The camp was filled with several thousand people. But even after a while, that went dry, and there wasn't enough to make it worthwhile. There was a man called Mr. Jenkins that stayed after others had left, and he set up a flume from a point above there where the stream came close and ran water down to it. Then he had an accident. His flume broke and ran water on the ground, which washed a big hole in the dirt. He saw the gleam of gold there and abandoned his other mine and worked this one where he got a fortune of $40,000 in the next month. Now this is the Placer County Courthouse. And after you leave Auburn, you get onto a very narrow winding road, which goes into a deep canyon about five miles along the road, and then there's this high road that crosses the canyon without going clear to the bottom of it. This next building that looks like it might be torn down soon is at Pilot Hill in Colma. And this next place is the El Dorado County Jail, or what's left of it. And this is Diamond Springs. And El Dorado. In Plymouth, used to be called Pokerville. I guess you probably noticed there's no second floor on that building there. Coma, which was a few towns back, was the place where gold was officially discovered in California. That's what led to the gold rush. A couple of other people found a little gold, but no one paid much attention to it until this story got on the front page of an Eastern newspaper. The man who discovered the gold was driven off his place by the miners, and he himself died in poverty. At nightfall in Amador City, the Imperial Hotel looks pretty inviting, unless you happen to be staying in your camper. A few miners found some gold in the creek here in 1848, but it wasn't until 1851 when a Baptist preacher really found the mother lode, quartz vein. The minister didn't know how to work the claim himself, so he got other ministers to help him. They called it the preacher's claim, and they got almost four million from it. They had to dig a 1,200-foot shaft into the mountain. And then in 1853, the Keystone Mine was found, which they got $25 million from. Now, on the second day's trip, we come first to Sutter Creek and Volcano. Then Jackson, Mokalumni Hill, and down to Altaville, Angels Camp, we run up to Columbia, Sonora, Jamestown, Chinese Camp, and Big Oak Platte. Then we go into Yosemite National Park and cross it, go to the other side to Mono Lake. And there we go to Bodie, the biggest ghost town on the trip. It's unpopulated. Sutter Creek is a big city, but you can see it still looks like it did back in the 1800s. There have been very few changes here.
volcano really isn't a volcano, but it's in a crater-like valley, and it has bare rocks that resemble lava. It's a quiet little town, one of the nicest ones that we visited during this trip. The first miners that came here averaged about $100 a day each, and the better places $500 a day. The trouble is the Indians had no regard for the white man's claims, and they just panned gold anywhere they wanted to. This finally resulted in a small Indian war with several killed on both sides. There's only one building in town that really looks like it's fairly new, and that's the post office. It sits off on a side street. This building housed two different saloons with a divider in the middle. There's a sign in the phone booth that says, please do not vandalize this phone booth as I have no other place to change clothes. Signed, Superman. The old three-story St. James Hotel is still in real good shape. Just a little bit west of Volcano is the Masonic Cave. It's something for the adventuresome person to explore, although it doesn't look like it's very big. The next town is called Jackson. The Argonaut Mine began rather slow in the 1850s, and by the 1870s it became a very good producer. When the gold finally ran out in 1930, they had dug over a mile into the ground and got over 17 million. The Kennedy Mine consists of 150 miles of tunnels. Mokalumni Hill started as a tent and a board city, but it burned in 1854. Many of the later buildings were made out of stone. At least 22 men were killed here in feuds. This was probably the roughest of all California gold mining towns to live in. The town that the Big Fault is named after, San Andreas, has this nice display of old equipment. I believe this old church is at Altaville. There's a road in this town called Raspberry Lane, which was named after a certain Mr. Raspberry who was hunting rabbits. He got his ramrod stuck in his gun and couldn't get it out, so he had to fire it. It chipped a rock and there was gold underneath. So he got $700 worth of gold the first day, the next day 2000 and then 7000 So he filed a claim. The town was actually named after George Angel, who started a trading post here. The name of the town, Angel's Camp. You might notice this house is built right on the highway. You wouldn't want to step out of the front door too fast. There doesn't seem to be a floor in here either. The state of California had decided to preserve one of these typical old mining towns. Columbia was the one decided upon. It's all restored to its former glory. The streets are blocked off for tourists to enjoy with its quaint shops and relics. It's called Columbia Historic State Park. The story of Columbia actually started in this gulch at the foot of Main Street. Some miners on their way through camped here, and it rained that night. Since their blankets were all soaked, they hung them up on the bushes to dry, and they got out their gold pans and started mining. 
and they found 30 pounds of gold in the stream worth four thousand six hundred eighty dollars as you can guess it only took a month and Columbia had a population of five thousand people since it was only April most miners just collapsed on their blanket at night because it was fairly warm unless they had some sort of shelter they slept in their sweat soaked clothes and worked in them the next day when the miner got to smelling too bad to stand himself he'd usually hang his clothes on a branch to freshen up and put on his other pair when the other clothes got too strong to stand he put on the first pair again sometimes it had rain which helped some when a lady newspaper reporter from San Francisco asked one of them how he did his laundry he just told her we don't need to use any starch in a short time there was hundreds of frame buildings here but a fire came along and destroyed most of them the next time they built brick buildings then gold was found under some of the buildings so half of them were torn down again during the boom days sugar cost three dollars a pound and flour was a dollar and a half a pound onions were a dollar candles were fifty cents each and the miners knives that they really needed cost thirty dollars each This is inside of Columbia's courthouse, and this is the old fire engine. It's a hand pumper, and it came from the Hawaiian Islands. Next door to here, there's an old-fashioned drugstore, and a dentist's office, and a photography shop.
little gold is found in most rocks, but besides the Appalachian Mountains, the most of the larger quantities of gold are found in the western states. This is a little out of Oregon, but it's a video we made back in 1990 of the ghost towns of eastern California and western Nevada. Come back again next week and let's travel further south on Route 49 as we visit more historical places in eastern California.